My name is Anthony, and this is Carlo, and we're students at St. Anne. And we'll be doing a scientific experiment to test the efficiency of each of these lights on how, how well they grow these plants that are cherry tomatoes that have been cloned from the same mother. This light is a HydroGrow 119 watt light, and this light is an HTG 120 watt light, and they're both from their respective companies. In order to t obtain the most objective and efficient results for both of these systems, we have to make sure that the grow conditions, the variables, and the lights don't interfere with one another. So the first control mechanism we use is this barrier that divides these lights. The light from this system cannot interfere with the light from this system. The second variable is that we use the exact same nutrients for both systems, so neither one has more or less than the other system. And the third variable we use is we keep the lights on for a 16-hour period, for, sorry, for 16-hour periods throughout the day. The way that we're going to determine which of these lights grows the same species of cherry tomato more efficiently is by, at the end of the experiment, we're going to count the number of cherry tomatoes produced by each specimen and we're going to calculate the net weight of all the cherry tomatoes of each, of each specimen for the hydrogrow light and for the HDG light. So we've just finished planting our cherry tomato clones and we look forward to seeing which light performs best. So far it looks like the hydrogrow 119 watt light is growing this plant a little bit better than the HTG 120 watt light because there are more flowers and buds on this one as opposed to that one even though they're generally the same size and for these two um, the hydrogrow 63 light actually looks like it's growing more effectively than the eBay 90 watt generic light and it's surprising because this is almost 30 watts less than this light this um, this cherry tomato clone has more buds and flowers on it and it's not reaching for the light as opposed to this one it has less buds and it's more spindly the, it has less leaf development and the, the stalk is is much more thin so as an indicator of the growing capacity of each light we're going to now take a look at the roots of each plant these are the roots of the cherry tomatoes grown under the 120 HTG light These are the roots of the cherry tomatoes grown under the 119 watt hydro grow light and as you can see they're much more thick and developed than the roots from the HTG 120 watt light. These are the roots of the cherry tomatoes grown under the generic eBay 90 watt light. As you can see, there's not much development there. These are the roots of the cherry tomato grown under the HydroGrow 63 watt light. And there's much, much more root development than there is under the eBay light. By day 21, we counted over 300 flowers and buds on the hydrogrill system. In contrast, the HTG system just had under 200. The 63 watt light from hydrogrill was also outperforming the 90 watt UFO light from eBay. The EB light didn't even have any cherry tomatoes that were actually growing yet, and the HydroGrow had several.
By day 49, my students and I were completely amazed at how many tomatoes that the HydroGrow light was producing. <laughs> Where did it come? She had a physio at 1.30. Yep, you too. The HTG 120 watt light didn't produce as many tomatoes as the HydroGrow, but we were still impressed with the quality and number of tomatoes that it produced in comparison to the 63 watt light and eBay's 90 watt light. The 63 watt hydrocro light produced quite a few more tomatoes than the eBay light. They were also quite a bit larger. The 90 watt LED light that we purchased off of eBay was approximately the same price as the HydroGrow 63 watt LED light. Make sure to watch part 2 as you will find out how many tomatoes each of the light grew and what the weight of them were.